Every day, hospitals and health systems are doing some of the most innovative work in America, finding new ways and new partners to collaborate with to advance the health of their communities. So what does all this good work mean for patients? Welcome to the American Hospital Association's new podcast series, Just Lead, a series highlighting how hospitals and health systems that have been recognized with AHA awards for innovation, collaboration, and health equity are transforming health care for their communities. I'm Tom Hederley with AHA Communications. The annual AHA Dick Davidson Nova Awards recognize the stars of this effort. The awards salute those programs that are helping to address many of our nation's most depressing health challenges while creating healthier communities and increasing well-being for their neighbors. Today, I am joined by Dr. Anna calderon Mandazo, Executive Director of the Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center at Broward Health, based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The center's continuous care program was among five programs honored by this year's NOVA Award. What is it doing right? How is it making a difference? Let's find out. Dr. calderon Mandazo, thank you so much for joining us today, and congratulations on uh, your thank recognition. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you on the program, and and let me first begin by asking what you would like our listeners to know about Broward Health. What what makes it special? Well, Broward Health is one of ten nationally recognized safety net healthcare systems. For more than eighty years, Broward Health has been improving the health and well being of our community through medical innovations, groundbreaking clinical trials, state of the art technologies, and academic medicine. Broward Health includes four major hospitals and more than 30 locations and offices overall, including Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center. We offer a wide variety of expert health care for the entire family. It's a very, very comprehensive system in place. To turn specifically to what the Dick Davidson Nova Award recognized, and that's the Continuous Care Program, what can you tell us about that? What, what is the program and how did it start? Sure. First of all, Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center is a nationally recognized patient-centered medical home, PCMH, providing early intervention services, pediatric primary and dental care, HIV specialty care, and health care coordination for more than 10,000 children and families with special health care needs. The Continuous Care Program was Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center's way to maintain and increase access to care during the pandemic. It started by our need to think outside the box in how we delivered health care. We had established programs that serve the special needs population, so we had to get creative and continue the mission in a safe and effective way so that our patients received ongoing care and intervention services they so desperately needed. No, I think it's fair to say that pretty much every care provider in the country had to step back and rethink how they were doing things when the pandemic struck and and really how to how to refocus and and pivot very quickly to keep uh, keep uh, central programs alive. To what extent did telehealth play a part in uh, in the continuous care program and in Broward's ability to serve patients through through this tough time? As you know, the shutdown happened so quickly for us. It forced us not to overthink as we usually do and just act. We started using telehealth within two weeks and applied it to all of our services, including performing developmental evaluations for our birth to three population, as well as telehealth visits and mental health counseling visits. We were fortunate to receive funds from HRSA to purchase the IT equipment and the permanent telehealth platform that could be integrated into our electronic health record. Broward Health, our parent company, ensured we had the PPE necessary for our clinical team to see patients in a safe manner, as well as our human resources and IT support to quickly set up office and a box for our care coordination staff to be able to telework. So we call a lot of these uh, COVID silver linings. An interesting phrase, but I, I, I see I see what you mean by that. If there were any doubts about whether telehealth has proven its worth as a, as a tool, would you say they were, have been erased by your own experience so far? I think telehealth is such a game changer for us. Uh, our families are very socioeconomically deprived and access to care, access to transportation is a huge barrier. So having the option to see our families via telehealth and offer services, which we will continue to do, is just wonderful. 
it's a especially for parents of kids with special needs just just navigating through taking three buses or the taxi that shows up late or doesn't show up or any of that and be able to address many of the things via telehealth is again a, like a COVID silver lining for us so we're very happy that it's uh, something we can offer our families going forward yeah um an interesting point I understand that's probably been a, the experience of, of a great many providers across the country, just a really valuable tool. Switching gears just a little bit here, uh, one of the other things that uh, was recognized by the, the Dick Davidson Award this year and that the Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center did really, really well was partner with outside organizations. So uh, let me ask you a little bit about what kinds of people did you find to work with or organizations did you find to work with locally and and how did that pay, pay off? Well, you know, I... Emotional bank accounts are very important, and if you've never heard of that term, is you don't um, you don't withdraw when it's it's a time of crisis. You you deposit, deposit, deposit. You build collaboration. You build relationships so that when a crisis hits, you can reach out to all your collaborators and your community partners, and everyone works together. Our Broward County organizations came together to support each other during the worst of times in this pandemic. We were especially touched by the support of our donors, our volunteers, who had limited opportunities in the community to serve and reached out to us. Our private family foundations, the local food banks, the farming community, and our network of nonprofit organizations. The United Way, who is um, one of our grant funders, created what they called a COVID unit of service that allowed us to build a grant that funded the care coordination. They wanted us to be able to continue to draw down our funds. The National Institutes of Health, which also funds us, provided us with bridge funding to ensure the integrity of the research team while clinical trials were placed on hold. And since the launch of this program, we've partnered with Broward Health Pharmacy, to establish an in-house pharmacy at CVTC, Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center, in an effort to provide the one-stop shop approach to healthcare. We've also partnered with Flight, which is a local nonprofit serving the youth aging out of foster care, and recently opened an on-site clinic to offer access to healthcare for this at-risk population. That's an impressive array of, of united forces coming together to, to work on behalf of community health. Were some of those uh, relationships in place prior to the pandemic, or did most of these get formed because of the pandemic? A mixture of both the majority were already ongoing relationships. We have a very tight-knit community here in Broward County. The farming community was a new, a new one. We partnered with a local farm that's called Mirando Farms, and we've knew them from the past, but they started a, a food distribution program and our board came together and they would buy one crate of fresh vegetables and then Miranda Farms would donate up one to the nonprofit. So our board members became farmers and our vice chair we call Farmer Jack and he's on the cover of the Nova Award um, booklet. I don't know if you've seen it, but that's our, our vice chair, lovingly known as Farmer Jack going forward. <laughs> A fitting, fitting uh, person to be on the cover. Healthcare leaders are increasing, as you well know, are increasingly looking at societal factors that influence health. And you've been talking about some of those, including food needs. How did the Broward system go about identifying those community needs and, and whether they were economic or social or health or, or health related? What, how did you get out there and sort of do the research and figure out what the local population needed and by way of support? As a hospital system, we do a community needs assessment and we reevaluate it every year and it's we include all the all the community partners to the table uh, we invite them to the table and we have oh it's it's a very lengthy process it's at least six weeks of meetings and data analysis um, but for the past 39 years cdtc has been addressing the societal factors that influence health outcomes of our special needs population. As a patient-centered medical home, CDTC is uniquely qualified to successfully address social determinants of health. These include access to care. We offer transportation assistance via bus passes and or taxi or ride sharing. We're excited we recently got a contract with Uber Health, so it's becoming a lot more easier and less expensive to pay for the, tax, the transportation. There's also economic barriers to health. 
We provide emergency assistance to help pay the electric bill, the phone bill, and the food. And this is through generous donations from fa family foundations and just wonderful, generous uh, donors in Broward County. There are social barriers. So families are assigned a medical case manager or a care coordinator to assess psychosocial needs. And finally, there are health related barriers. We coordinate services to specialists and ensure that there were no barriers when it comes to navigating the healthcare system. What we found was that the pandemic spotlighted all of the social determinants of health and prioritized the importance of addressing this topic. How would you assess the impact that all of these efforts, these coordinated efforts have made on your community? Well, I think the continuous care program's impact has been significant in that we were able to maintain our clinical and early intervention services open as we were deemed an essential workplace. CDTC's patients all had underlying conditions which placed them at risk for COVID infections. This program kept them safe and the staff safe while being able to be available and accessible to the clients. Timely access to care via telehealth was a game changer for our family's health and well being. Timely availability for our early intervention services, as well as offering virtual physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy services in our Birth to Three program allowed our special needs clients to receive the interventions they urgently needed and not miss us a day. And we did very special drive-by brigades that were offered to our clients, such as back-to-school backpacks, food, hurricane prep kits, Thanksgiving meals, toys for the holidays, baby showers, were all made possible because of the help from our community to help those less fortunate. Our clients and volunteers both benefited from the goodwill of our community. Really, really impressive track record. Congratulations. Anything you. else you'd like to share about the, the program or the work that you've, you've been able to uh, achieve so far that we haven't discussed? One last thing. Our tagline is beyond medicine into the heart of care. And I'm proud that our team shined during the pandemic and that the American Hospital Association is recognizing their hard work. Thank you again uh, so much for your time. Talking about your program, and again, congratulations on being recognized for this terrific work with the Dick Davidson Nova Award this year. You've been listening uh, to Dr. Anna Calderon Randazzo, who is Executive Director of the Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center at Broward Health in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Again, Dr. Calderon Randazzo, thank you so much for being a guest on Advancing Health today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <music>